It's Byron. Hello. You all know Byron. <laughs> I don't need to introduce this man. <laughs> yes, he is bloody good looking. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to cut his hair. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Alright. So, I'm going to suggest that we just cut the underneath, yeah? Thank okay. you. Yeah, honestly, you're the Because if you want to grow it, yeah. I mean, I. I could just take all of the weight out, to be fair, and clean it a little bit. If you're trying to grow it out, then... I mean, I, I could try to give my opinion on it, but you are the expert. No, I know, but so like you, you have to wear wild. it. I could turn around and tell you, you know what, you do great with a shaved head. I mean, I'd believe you. I'd probably go ahead with it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm easy. Honestly, whatever you think is best. I think the question on everyone's minds is, did you sleep with the old lady outside the gates of the Love Island? Advert. <laughs> <laughs> to sign an NDA, unfortunately. So I choose not to comment. I plead the fifth. Yeah, I, I saw your look that you gave her was kind of not so keen. Yeah, I mean, depends how you read into it, really. I think she was the type of lady who'd like someone who's playing really hard to get <laughs> to the point where you look repulsed. And, um, <laughs> Worked out alright. <laughs> Got myself a new nan out of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My question is why was there a lady sweeping the dirt outside of the gate? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why is she cleaning up outside? Yeah, it's I true. mean, dirt doesn't I mean, need to be I mean, she could swept. have been planting, you know, flowers or anything, couldn't there she? There we go. Who, who decided on that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they didn't read into it enough. Well, I don't know, maybe we're reading into it too much. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, alas, I hope she's seen it. <laughs> On the day of doing it, she <laughs> she was quite classic, to be honest. The, the actress who played her was very funny. I'm just going to stick the old uh, hostel. Damn, that's old school. That's sweet. Apron on. And this is just to uh, stop all the hair going down my front. <laughs> Why would you want to do that? Yeah. There's nothing like feeling absolutely itchy for the rest of the day. <laughs> oh, it's the satisfaction of scratching the itch there. That, that, that's, yeah. that's why you do this job. Yeah. That's why you got into the biz. That's exactly right. You know what, when I first thought about it, I was thinking to myself, why do I want to do this? Yeah. I really want to just like itch. scratch my skin until <laughs> it comes off because of other people's hair. Yes, this is the one. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you're right. Have you ever, I mean, I hear some ghost stories from time to time of when you don't wear shoes in the salon and someone's hair falls on your feet. Is it possible that it becomes an ingrown hair? Uh, yeah. Really? Is it, I mean... Why would you not wear shoes? Uh, well, I don't know. South Africa, you wear flip-flops quite a lot. So, I mean, when uh, it's like 30, 30 odd degrees outside, yeah. wearing shoes and socks is not ideal. Well, agreed that if you're in South Africa that you might not wear, like full-on shoes but even if I was in South Africa working yeah I probably would still wear shoes inside when cutting hair for sure that would be like my biggest nightmare to have someone else's hair growing yeah and, no. and growing in me it's it's really painful actually the oh. hair splinter thing is it's real yeah yeah it's horrid oh. um, some nights you get them you have to get the tweezers and oh, pull them gosh. back out oh. it's not nice it's really not I mean, yeah, but the, none of that sounded nice. That can be stage two of how experienced you are. How bad do your feet look? Are they welted enough? Have you hey, had... what's that lump? <laughs> That's one of my client's hairs growing in my hand. <laughs> That's ten years of experience you're pointing out. Yeah. Really it's good. So enjoyable. <laughs> You've never experienced anything like it. The sheer pleasure of pulling that hair out of your hand. <laughs> It's true though, when it's been yeah. hurting you all day. Yeah, sure. The, the pleasure that you feel of getting it out of your hand afterwards is like, oh, thank God. Yeah, yeah. Can't compare it. Freak. And the London Barber, when did that become a, a trademark? Uh, become back thing? in 2013. Damn, eh? I started in 2013. I left TG, my old company. Yeah. And uh, started the London Barber, and I've been doing it ever since. It's, yeah, at the minute, I wanted it to be a lifestyle brand. Okay. Which, so what, like 360 degree type of everything well, from here to skin? <laughs> yeah, like personal personal care range, basically. Okay, I wanted, that's I wanted cool. it to be all about personal care and... Solid. You know, but at the minute, it's, it's really just like education, 
where I go into people's shops and teach and, and oh, cut absolutely. like that. And then, uh, yeah, I think that for me, as time progresses, hopefully I'll be able to bring out a, a personal care range that people can, can use. Damn, that's awesome. Have you already got the brain ticking on some ideas? I've, I've got loads of ideas, dude. Really, like, yeah. it's, I've been working on this since I left. Jeez. the other company you know but like it takes time it takes a lot of effort yeah it's not easy to to do it it costs so much money i can imagine hopefully this will help as well of course create a bit of awareness maybe someone will watch and want to get involved that's cool imagine that how did you guys start your business together oh when i was watching a london barber vlog heard him mention it yeah exactly the rest right. is history that would be cool yeah for sure so any of you rich people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. I love sleeping. Could we monetize that? Mm, depends. Uh, if you sell mattresses. <laughs> there we go. Like, see, there we go. Then you are monetizing <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> then I'm not just doing it for the money. Some love in there too. Well, that's good. I'll look into that. Byron's mattresses coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> you can set them up anyway, they're mobile mattresses. The Langley mattress. There we go. Trade, do you mind if I trademark that now? I know you said it, but... Yeah, I'm that's not. fine, it's fine, I'll let you have it. Thank you. It's no problem. You're not going to come down for percentages down the line. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> What's the weirdest hair you've ever had to work with before? Or is it all just very... Um, South African, <laughs> thick, coarse, <laughs> wavy. <laughs> Uh, it's hitting a bit close to home. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, it's not so much that it's like some people ask for some weird haircuts, dude. Like, really? Yeah. Some stuff. Do you ever, has anyone ever asked you for something? And just like, uh, I really wish you didn't have to ask me for this because it's gonna look awful. Yeah, like I, I'm I'm the type of person though. I'm not the type of like hairdresser that will be like, yeah, cool, we should do that. Yeah. Like if I think it's gonna look bad on you then I'd be the first one to turn around and say, nah. That's good. You know, like, that that's not cool, guy. Like, yeah, for sure. Don't do that, dude. Or whatever. Well, good on you. Well, because at the end of the day, they're a walking advert for my work. True that, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. All I'm doing is your hair. Yeah. So rather than removing any length, I'm just pulling all the weight out of it. Oh, awesome. So it will sit cleaner and flatter. Oh, that's cool. And then you can just start growing it. Because I know you want to grow it. So. That's it, yeah. And most people that say, oh, you need to cut it to grow it, you do. But you need to cut the weight out rather than... The length. The length, yeah. Because the length is what you want to grow. Yeah. So these serrated scissors, do they, what do they cut, like every second hair or something? Those ones do. Oh, those are the yeah, ones? Yeah, these, okay. these are the proper ones. These are just oh, cutting yeah. hair off 100%. Okay. But um, they're sort of... These scissors, yeah. the texturizer slash, well, people call them a thinning scissor, but I don't like to call them that because the word thinning for most men you don't want and women is like, horrible, yeah. right? So, but these scissors, they take like 30% instead of 100. Oh, damn. So then they can alleviate the weight for you, but leave the length. Thank you. But I, I do this first because this is going to add some texture by Thank coming you. through, and all I'm doing is like a. Uh, it's basically creating little channels of weight removal okay. within the length of your hair. I can kind of see in the LCD screen of a camera. Yeah. Okay, good going. It's quite a cool setup you got going on here. This is Vlog 101. Yeah, Joe was jealous oh, when he came to me. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I've been out vlogged. <laughs> in his video. Um, oh. but no, basically, it's just a Canon M3. Okay. It's not the best camera in the world, I'm not going to lie, like, okay. it could be a lot better, the autofocus is suspect, Questionable. you know, and the one thing, the reason the microphone is at the side there, yeah. is because if I was to attach it to the top hot shoe where it's meant to go, we wouldn't be able to see in the screen. Oh, well, that's pretty sweet actually, I mean, so that it can do that, that, that it has that option. It's, it's cool that it can sit on the top. Yeah. Because if you were if you were just like doing, you were you were not in it and you were just filming it, yeah. then it, it's fine. Yeah, true. And you'd hate to get to the editing stage and realise that you 
you're pointing the camera behind you instead of at your face or right? something. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's perfect for, for vlogging and whatnot. I don't know many guys who have... I mean, there's the one guy... Do you know Fun For Louis? He does like travel type of stuff. I've heard of Fun for Louis. I think I... he sh he shoots on a can a Sony A7S if I'm not mistaken, which is like quite a high end or at least like very they have very no decent. screen, right? Um, I think it would, but it, it's it's medium end to like make good looking pretty films, yeah. and I mean essentially you're both vlogging, yeah, and I don't yeah. see any reason why you don't just need to use a point and shoot Canon. Yeah, I guess his will essentially look nicer, but at the end of the day, people come to watch you, and not so much. It's a perfect Sorry, difference between the shadows and highlights, and and if you've created it or not. So I think it's hundreds. As long as the microphone's good, I hate watching things back and you can't even hear what's happening. And that's so loud, I have to turn everything down. Oh really? Yeah. Well, that's a bonus. Rather that than the other way around, and you have distorted audio coming through. Yeah. But the only the only thing is it, it will pick up pretty much everything. Okay. So someone telling secrets in the room next door, you're like, oh. So that's what you think of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm, beautiful. Maybe I'll start filming and yeah. It's the equivalent of putting a cup to your ear to the wall. Yeah. Eavesdropping all the way. <laughs> you just set up a cannon M3. Even worse. Yeah. Then they're like, why are you filming this? Uh, I'll try to get audio clips, if I'm really honest. <laughs> why are you filming with a wall? <laughs> You're going to jail, bitch. <laughs> What's the one thing about vlogging that you've realized that you didn't even think of before you started? Uh, I, to be honest with you, it gives you a lot of confidence to do things, like to, to go out into into public with it was a big one. Uh, I'm sure, yeah. Because like, you know, okay, so basically this is what happened. I did the video with Joe. Yeah. And Joe Joe got me the, the subs, right? Yeah. And I was like, right, now I have to do it without a foul. I'd been putting it off for ages, I wasn't confident and I didn't know how to edit, I didn't know how to film anything. So I was like, how am I gonna do this? You know, like I've never been into this before, I don't know how to do it. Yeah. Then he gives me this shout out and gets me like two and a half thousand subs and I'm like Hang on. Shit, now I have to do it. Yeah. If I don't, then I'm gonna put myself into a position where I'm sitting on a YouTube channel that has two and a half thousand subscribers that have been given nothing. Yeah, I get you. Since doing it. Right, so what I decided was, okay, I'll I'll get involved. Okay. And I, and I'll just go for it. And so I just grabbed the camera and went and in that first one, I remember just walking through the town and everyone just looking at me like I was mental. <laughs> like properly, properly mental. <clears throat> oh gosh. I mean, I guess it, it helped to keep it in your mind that you'll never see those people again. For me, I was just like, you know what? I look like an alien to these people anyway, so... Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> like, what difference does it make, you know? Like... Yeah. If I see people vlogging in public, I look at them out of like, ah, oh, that person's vlogging. Not as in like, oh, what is that person doing? But I don't know, maybe in your head, you can take people's eye contact with you and watching you to be like, oh, they're judging me, when really, they might just be interested in what you're doing. They are, and I would agree with that, because I think that like a couple of the times the people were more like, like looking at me, not in a funny way because they felt like I was being a freak or anything, but just like, <laughs> I wonder what he's doing, I wonder yeah. what the what the point and purpose of what he's doing is. Yeah, exactly. I think cameras in general do that. As soon as it, someone has a camera and points it, I guess naturally you look at where the camera's pointing, and if it's pointing at yourself and you're filming yourself, then people are just like, what could he possibly be doing? Especially people who don't understand YouTube. They've never seen someone walking around with a camera pointing directly back at their face from an arm's length away. Yeah, right. Just like, okay. The Gorilla Pod makes it easy. Yeah, I see that. Super versatile. It's a nice way of carrying the camera, actually. Yeah, I can imagine. Because sometimes when I've gone to people's homes, and like in a couple of vlogs we did it outside, I managed to grip that to a chair. Oh, yeah, they're super good for that type of stuff. And then they were still able to capture the, you know, the whole thing. Everything you needed, yeah, for sure. The ones I've done have just been on a phone, really. So I should probably. Oh, really? I should probably look at like upgrading at some stage. 
It depends though. Like phones nowadays. They're super good, yeah. Some of the footage I shoot is on a phone. Like I don't always just shoot on that camera. For sure. But that's some of the footage that I shoot on the phone comes out nice. Definitely. And it's something you always have on you as well. So Senna I mean there was one occasion last year I was, I went to Ibiza without a visa by accident. So I thought I had a Schengen visa. Oh, yeah, because of course you're but, South African. Yeah, so I had to basically you have to get a visa for Europe. So you, if you want to go to Germany, you get a visa that can get you into the whole of Europe called the Schengen visa. But with us going to Croatia, I thought that they were in the Schengen state. So I got a Croatian visa thinking I could go anywhere in Europe. But when I went to Ibiza first, two days before going to Croatia, I realized that wasn't the case. You needed your own Croatian visa. So at the border gates, I got basically put in like airport jail for about three hours. And the whole time I was wishing like, oh, I wish, like then that occasion I wouldn't have a camera on me to film it. Yeah. And I wasn't vlogging at the time, but if I'd been in that situation again, I'd definitely just whip it out and be like, hey guys, so uh, <laughs> kind of in prison. <laughs> Um, so there, I guess, phones are good. Also events, if you go watch a concert or something and you want to vlog around there, you can't take cameras in. No, see that's the, when I went to see the Vamps the other week, Oh yeah. I, I just took my phone and I was going to take my camera. I wasn't entirely sure of the rules and regulations yeah. of doing that. So I thought, oh, I want to take it just in case yeah. and then they take it off of me, then I'll be in big trouble. Because I remember before, I was going to a football match, but I'd done a haircut just before at someone's house, mm -hmm. and I went to this football match, it was at Wembley, to watch the England squad. Thank you. And they took my scissors and everything, and I had to get one of the the staff members to look after them. Okay. Because if I hadn't, then I would have lost my scissors, stuff, you know, yeah. it's like two and a half grand's worth of scissor. What? Yeah, these scissors are like... Two and a half grand? Yeah, like, like one pair, this pair here is like... 750 to a thousand I think something like that it was I paid you know and the other ones are the same and the, the, it's mad it's Damn. crazy what you pay for it right this blonde stuff that you were worried about yeah I don't really see any of it that was okay awesome it's pretty much gone it's all in my head because it, it was hard to take out for like a year and a half I think it's when I'm in certain lights I don't know if it's fluorescent light or LED or something it brings it out more but maybe it's just in my head and my hair is yeah it looks it but it's I mean Go and have a quick look, Byron, and just double check your your length and stuff, and just see if you want me to. Yeah, for sure. All right, Byron. Bro, thank you, you so much. Good, bro. Keen to see the progression of it. Yeah, it looks time. good like this, though. I like this sort of like messy, Sweet, forward yeah. stuff. I mean, I, I never like... really brush it anyway, so messy no. is good. It's very South African of you. Sweet, well, I'll take that as a compliment, I think. <laughs> yeah, like just chilled, beachy. Sweet, yeah, you know, that's it. That, that type of thing. That's it. Ledge. Oh, came off. oh, what? I mean, from what it looks like and what comes off. This, this is all you, all this other stuff. <laughs> Damn. Crazy, right? Well, let's keep going, bro. So, give it. <laughs> your skin's looking far too good for the amount of experience you have. <laughs> It's the chest that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's just rip cage at this point. Thanks, Brie. Well, let's get your details and stuff. Yeah. How long do you think I should wait? It's uh, 07. Alright, there you go. The Byron Langley haircut video that I promised you all that I would do. Uh, thank you so much everyone that watched my last video and that commented it, <laughs> commented on the video and said that they would like to see this video. That's why I did it for you. Um, any recommendations of videos that you'd like to see, please drop them in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, remember to hit the subscribe button. Uh, give it a thumbs up because it always helps. And if you want to get notifications, hit the bell button. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. See you later guys. Bye bye.